Hello and welcome to this lecture in the IBM Cloud Foundation Skills Service. So in this lecture we're going to start looking at the services that are provided on the IBM Cloud. Now there is over 200 different services available on the IBM Cloud today and that's a number which is growing. Um, but don't worry, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to uh, go into minute detail of each service here. Um, I'm just going to try and give you a feel for what each service is in a 30 second or so summary. And I'm also going to uh, break this down into several videos dealing with only uh, a few sections of uh, the IBM Cloud Catalog in each. Okay, so this video is going to concentrate on the compute services in the catalog, and this in itself can be broken down into a few subsections, um, namely infrastructure, VMware virtual data centers, VMware services, VMware managed services, serverless compute, and Cloud Foundry. So, kicking off with infrastructure, we have um, first of all, we've got virtual server. So this is your classic virtual machines in the cloud where you can provision compute that's run operating systems. So basically giving you a virtual server in the cloud. Um, we'll go into this in much more detail on, uh, on those and, uh, and the different flavors available in this series. Uh, then we've got bare metal servers. So when you have an application that requires uh, more horsepower or if there's uh, maybe licensing issues that you need to contend with, uh, then a bare metal server could be the answer. So here you basically get a server that's deployed by IBM Cloud and you're then able to manage that server from the metal up. So you can install your hypervisor or operating system of choice um, right on top of the bare metal. So you have total control of the server and of course you, uh, you never have to share it with other users. So Cloud Foundry Enterprise Environment. Uh, so we'll talk a bit more about Cloud Foundry in a moment. But um, if you want to run Cloud Foundry instances in a dedicated, uh, isolated environment that um, only you have access to, and, and also where you have greater control, um, you can provision this service which uh, gives you the ability to do so. Uh, the VMware application server, so this gives you a, a pre-configured WebSphere server with a couple of installation choices uh, and a hosted, it's, it's hosted on a Red Hat Enterprise Linux guest server. Uh, HPCAS, so this is High Performance Computing as a Service, so this allows you to quickly create um, HPC clusters in the cloud. Um, so rather than um, obviously having these massive machines on premises, you can, you can just deploy them in the cloud, which is a, probably a lot cheaper to do. Um, and you can run your HP, your HPC jobs and uh, simulations, etc., uh, before downloading the results for analysis. And you can do that with other tools in the in the IBM cloud. You've then got the Kubernetes service, so this allows you to run containerized workloads in the cloud. So rather than deploying virtual machines to run applications, you can instead create what's called um, Docker containers. And uh, these have all the resources required inside the container, inside the Docker container to run your application. And you can actually then deploy those on the Kubernetes service. So uh, containers can scale um, really effectively and, and far more quickly than virtual machines can. And uh, they're also at the fraction of the cost. So, uh, so they're actually um, you know, um, on trend at the moment in cloud computing and uh, something you'll probably come across quite a lot. And we'll talk about more, more about these later on, in the, uh, later on in the series as well. So moving on then to VMware virtual data centers. So, um, so IBM was actually um, the first cloud provider to really include VMware services other than VMware themselves. Uh, in fact, I was at the audience at um, IBM Interconnect in 2016 when the announcement was made um, that we were going to partner with VMware. And uh, we also have a great range of services for VMware workloads. So if your organization is a, a user of VMware, uh, then these services are, are really for you because they're a way to maintain your VMware workloads, um, but actually within a, within a cloud environment. So first of all, we have VMware vCenter on uh, the IBM cloud. And um, so this is a hosted private cloud that delivers the VMware vSphere stack as a service. So the VMware environment is built on top of uh, a couple of, well, it's actually a minimum of two IBM cloud bare metal servers. And it gives you um, a shared file level storage and includes automatic deployment and configuration. Um, so it gives you a, a, a it gives you a, a, an easy to manage logical um, edge firewall and that's powered by VMware NSX. So the entire environment can be provisioned in, uh, in just a matter of hours. So traditionally on premises you might be you know, spending days or even weeks um, provisioning these kinds of environments. You can actually do it within hours um, in, in the IBM Cloud. Next we have the VMware Cloud Foundation. So this brings together VMware, vSphere, vSAN and NSX 
into a natively integrated stack of virtual compute, virtual storage, and virtual networking. Um, so this and this is obviously dedicated to you. So the environment can be operated independently or as a seamless hybrid extension of your on-premises data center. Now we have VMware vSphere and IBM Cloud, which lets you build your own IBM hosted environment using VMware compatible hardware. And you can build your VMware environment how you want it. So, so you're not um, you can do it how you want to. You're not actually stuck with you know the way that IBM says says you must build it. So this can be um, anything from a single ESXi cluster right up to a software-defined data center, um, and it helps you extend your um, basically extend your on-premises VMware environment into the MBM, into the IBM cloud. So that means that you can effectively increase your data center capacity, um, which can be really useful for, for for bursting or for failover or for DR. Uh, we then have the the NetApp on tap select. So this is a software-defined storage virtual appliance, uh, and that runs on dedicated bare metal servers in the IBM cloud. So it gives you uh, uh, lots of advanced data management functions that you'd, you'd probably expect from a, a NetApp um, offering. Um, but of course, you don't need to manage a physical system because um, IBM Cloud actually manages the physical stuff for you. So moving on to the uh, the VMware services. So um, we have. Um, IBM Cloud private hosted um, on, so this is on, uh, so this is a VMware vCenter server on the IBM Cloud. So this is a way to deliver IBM Cloud private effectively, which brings together the power of uh, containerized IBM software and Kubernetes um, on a VMware um, environment in the cloud. So it allows you to con control the whole stack um, using, of course, familiar tools if you're a, if you're a VMware user. FortiGate Security Appliance, so this is a, an enterprise strength firewall that's deployed as a dedicated, highly available appliance and it goes in front of your VMware environment. Um, it protects the, the servers and the virtual machines you've deployed on your public VLAN in your VMware deployment. Uh, the FortiGate Virtual Appliance is deployed as a pair of dedicated VMs and they can be placed on the edge of your network or they can be placed between your network zones in your VMware environment. So uh, they basically offer services like packet inspection, uh, firewall protection, um, uh, logging and SSL termination. Uh, we then got F5 on the IBM cloud. So this is a F5 big IP virtual edition appliance. So it offers things like load balancing and traffic management services. So we'll talk about load balancing a bit more later on in the series, but effectively allows you to send requests to different servers based on various rules with the basic effect of ensuring that um, you know, no one's server or virtual machine gets overloaded. Though there's there's obviously other use cases for uh, load balancing as well. Uh, so this F5 appliance also offers health monitoring to ensure that your applications are available, uh, and it also gives an advanced you know can give an advanced network firewall, um, distributed denial of a, of service attack mitigation, uh, and there's a few other services too depending on how you choose to deploy it. Uh, we then got um, IBM Cloud Secure Virtualization, so this is a service that encrypts as well as uh, geofences data at the hardware level. Um, so this is a great service where security and compliance um, is, is really necessary and at the top of your list of concerns. And um, in fact, IBM, Intel and Hytrust have partnered to uh, create this and it's, a, it's actually a first-to-market VMware solution. So next we have the high trust cloud control on IBM Cloud. So in a VMware world, a common component is, is, is obviously the hypervisor. So this is a security solution that helps better harden the hypervisor. Um, it locks down things like access and provides a, a better visibility into and control over the environment overall. So it's a, it's a good security tool. Uh, we've then got the high trust data control on the IBM Cloud. And this is a powerful encryption and key management solution. So it offers uh, FIPS 140-2 level 1 validated key management. Um, so if you have uh, data encryption needs within uh, VMware, uh, then, then this is a, a great solution for that. Uh, KMIP for VMware on IBM Cloud. Um, so this service provides a 24 by 7 highly available service to manage encryption keys uh, that are used within VMware. Uh, so it lets you create, retrieve, activate, revoke and destroy the encryption keys and gives you, um, you know, ma management capabilities uh, to, to maintain the association between the client credentials and the, uh, the actual encryption keys as well. 
IBM Spectrum Protect Plus, so, so this is a, uh, effectively a data protection and availability solution. Uh, VAM, um, this is a, a backup and replication service that helps you protect your data against loss by doing things like image-based backups and um, enabling data recovery from backups at various levels too. Uh, you've then got Zerto on IBM Cloud, so, if, so this is for disaster recovery. So if the worst happens, you can quickly rebuild your VMware environment and get going again. Okay, so moving on, to, uh, we have some uh, some VMware managed services as well. So these are uh, so first of all, we've got Mission Critical VMware on IBM Cloud. So this is a fully managed um, service which uh, is delivered by IBM Cloud Services or other IBM services rather, and it gives a, a multi-site solution with a targeted SLA of 99.99%. Um, so and that's with, uh, with with zero data loss as well. Uh, so this is for those you know mission critical systems where downtime and data loss are, are big no-nos, and uh, you know you can have uh, the extra security there of having it managed for you by IBM. The next service we've got there is uh, managed services from IMI. So again, this is an offering where IBM will actually manage your your VMware environment for you. So so it's not to the uh, not to the same um, SLAs uh, and, and data losses uh, that the uh, mission critical VMware services but again it's a way if you have a, a VMware environment but uh, perhaps you don't have the skills to manage it um, then it's a way to have have IBM manage that for you in a in a way where um, it's it's secure um, and, and it's and it's available uh, then we have the, uh, the, the the VM managed service and also Zerto managed services as well so again these are backup, backup and recovery and uh, DR services as before but but this time around, they're actually uh, managed for you by IBM. Okay, so moving on again, uh, this time to serverless compute, um, and functions is the uh, is actually the one service here. So this is a, a, a function as a service platform, which basically allows you to well, effectively create pieces of code um, that perform or typically perform a single function, and uh, they're actually executed as and when as and when needed. So no servers are required, so this is this is why it's called serverless. Um, so all the execution requirements are taken care of um, effectively for you by the platform. You should have to worry about scaling either. Um, so you can create complete applications using functions. Um, and because you pay per execution, they can actually be extremely cost effective. But, but anyhow, we'll, we'll, we'll take a closer look at functions later in the series as well. So lastly, in this particular video, we have a uh, Cloud Foundry. So these are essentially runtime environments that you can provision for uh, creating web applications in various popular languages. So you can see there, you know, obviously Java, Node.js, ASP, Swift, um, PHP, and Python, just 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 to name a few of those. So um, so basically, you, um, you you just provision the service that you need uh, according to, to to your language of choice. Um, so there's no worry about creating servers of any kind. Um, that's all. Um, well, it, again, it's uh, you know it's it's uh, it's all done for you under the covers. So this is actually what we call a, a PaaS service, so platform as a service. So basically, you can just get on and code, and you can uh, you can have a web-based application um, actually up in minutes. So that's um, so that's it for this video. We've we've, uh, we've obviously covered quite a few services there. So well done for sticking with it. Um, so don't worry if you don't remember all of them. Um, we're going to go into uh, a, a few more services or, or the rest of the services in the following videos. So when you feel ready, um, get, feel free to move on to the, to the next one.